SFO, LAX. Lose an hour, gain an hour. I mean, I love waking up in the morning not knowing what's gonna happen or who I'm gonna meet, or where I'm gonna wind up. I'm leaving on a jet. Once you cross the ocean and cut yourself loose, looking for something more beautiful, something more exciting. And yes, I admit, something more dangerous. Next time, let's go first class, all right? Check in for that flight doesn't begin for another two hours, sir. This is your life, and it's ending one minute at a time. Yo, 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 welcome to another episode of On the Road with 60 East, the Happiness of Pursuit Festival Edition. We have a special guest today, artist, producer with credits including Ab Soul, Kendrick Lamar, Merz, and many more, author, YouTube sensation, podcaster, public speaker, husband and father to a beautiful family, founder of CurtisKingTV.com, which is an amazing online community of creatives with tutorials, reviews, courses, and many more. Um, it's been real dude, real dope to see this dude grow over the years. I've known this guy for about nine years. Um, we played events like the Pay Dues Festival, the DIY Fest, and many more. And uh, yeah, it's been really dope to see the growth and evolution, and I'm glad we were able to get you on this year's festival, brother. How you been? Good, good, good. I, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you having me on, and as well as the, uh, the the grand introduction, man. I really appreciate that. Thank you, man. So, uh, how's life, man? How you been? Uh, we haven't spoken in a while, man, but uh, I definitely keep an eye on you and everything you do uh, up to date with everything. And uh, just how, how's the transition been, brother? It's been good. It's been amazing. Um, I think, I mean, you you probably are one of a lot of people who said the same thing. Like, I haven't seen you around. You haven't really been at the shows, and uh, that that is all done purposely. You know, you get to a point in life where, you know, you realize that you won't achieve the things that you want until you have uh, the ultimate focus, and there's no better focus than solitude. There's no better focus than peace. There's no better focus than actually getting them done and, and not always being as available on social media. But uh, the transition has been amazing to, to fatherhood, to you know, becoming a, a you know, a married and having a wife and all that good stuff. It's just, I'm I'm grateful every single day. That's great, man. That's dope. Um, yeah, I see like a lot of the, a lot of artists. You start growing and stuff, and um, you don't get to see these people as much unless you guys are playing the same event or speaking on the same panel or whatever it may be. Um, and it's a you know, it's a blessing to, to see everybody growing and stuff like that, getting to connect again. You know whether it be in California, in hometown, or across the world, or, you know, it's it's always dope to see family and friends like that. Man, and congratulations to you, too, specifically, because, I mean, I've, I've, I've had the privilege of seeing you grow this thing from many different levels, man, and, and you know, from, I don't know if you even remember it, we had a show that was, like, near Corona um, some time ago, man, and, and, and it was, like, hole in the wall show to – Going from stuff like that, man, to doing your own festival and 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 really just continuing to build your brand and your audience, uh, nothing but the most respect to you. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. I know uh, I know we don't got a lot of your time, man. So you're a you're a very knowledgeable person uh, on all aspects of the industry, and I'm glad I'm I'm able to speak to you uh, on this format. And uh, I, I really want to pick your brain about your experience with um, with festivals for some of the younger artists that maybe like a little less experience that uh, maybe this is their first festival. And uh, I really want them to get the most out of it. And uh, that's kind of what I wanted to pick your brain about today. Absolutely. Okay. Sounds good. Well, I mean, I, I could say first and foremost, um, when it comes to just doing any kind of show at all, I think the biggest issue young artists have or even young producers when they're doing showcases is preparation. Uh, the biggest fear is what if I mess up? You know, what, what if it doesn't go according to plan? And you got to come to grips with some things. One, if you're not, if you're not practicing, over practicing, really going in and, and, and more than just practicing your lyrics and practicing your songs, but practicing your mindset, practicing how to handle distractions and being under pressure. Um, if you're not doing that, and, and also if you're not coming to grips that you are a human being, you will mess up. A lot of people get in a space where, um, you know, they, they, they do feel like they dropped the ball at these events. But from somebody who's been doing them for so long, um, you know, you, you all you can do is just set yourself up for the best, best scenario that, that's given. And, and that comes from preparation. Like even for this festival, it was my first show in a few years. And uh, to come back to a 
a festival of the first show is, is, a, is a high order for anybody, but, you know, you, you kind of get rid of any doubt by just continuing to rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. No different than, you know, you see like LeBron and AD and, and these, uh, these practices before the season starts. Uh, that's what you got to do. You know, if you, if, if you want to perform like, like one percentile people are doing, you got to give one, one percentile type of effort. And, and that's not easy. And, you know, the numbers sound a lot lower, but <laughs> it's not an easy task to do. So I've been just practice, 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 over practice. And I love it. That's great, man. Um, let, let's say, let's take it back to the beginning and, um, getting on your first festival and your first events and stuff like that, you know, uh, you're real known for doing the pay dues campaign and that was very inspiring to people like me who followed suit and stuff like that. And, um, a lot of artists been reaching out that, um, aren't necessarily ready to be on a festival stage. And, um, maybe you can also speak on knowing when you're ready to take that next step into like the festival arena into these bigger shows and how to properly approach, um, an organizer and stuff like that. Well, my best advice for somebody who is asking me if, if I'm ready for a festival, if you're asking if you're ready, you're not ready, right? You, you want to be able to put yourself so ingrained and so in-depth and so, like, you want to be so hands-on with this stuff that when a festival pops up, it's like, oh, shit, we're there. Like, <laughs> like it's time for festival season, you know what I mean? But, you know, it, it, there's nothing wrong with setting a goal to do it. I just think that you got to set your goal higher and allow for, you know, if you believe in God, if you believe in the universe, whatever you believe in, you have to allow that to kind of have its natural order. And a lot of times we obsess over something and then we get it and realize that either we weren't ready for it or we didn't prepare or that it just wasn't that time. And so I think for anybody who aspires to be that, like, I, I want you to achieve so much that you no longer have to ask the question. You don't no longer have to, you know, uh, harass Sixty East about being on the festival. He should be coming and looking for you. Like, yo, what's what's your rate looking like? What's what's the uh, what's your situation? You know, I, I think that when you're hungry, uh, you get on the radar of the people that you need to get on the radar of. And when you're out there and you're always, you know, people are always seeing your face. Eventually, they ask the question, you know, yo, what is it that you do? You know, and and, and how are you able to build such a, a dedicated audience? That's the and that's the last piece too is that. A lot of folks focus their as artists and producers, and they, they focus themselves just on achievements, just on, you know, little rewards here and there. There's nothing wrong with it, but it shouldn't be the all, the end all. Like, you should not be just collecting a bunch of achievements. You should be out here working. You should be out here working and, and, and really trying to aspire to do things that are going to fulfill you and truly make you happy. And, and the things they usually do that are things that help you grow and things that help you contribute to something bigger than you, one of which being growing an audience and doing something for them, right? The better, better connection you make with people, the, the more they'll be at your shows. The more they'll be at your shows, the more you'll be on the radar of people who throw festivals. Mm, bars, bars on bars. <laughs> for those uh, for those that may not be familiar, can you speak on um, your journey with doing the whole pay dues campaign and how – being on that festival and other events similar to it have helped your career. Right. Well, you know, it, it may be kind of contradictory to the advice that I gave, but when I went after it, in my mind, I, you know, I said to myself, I'm more than ready. I just need to raise visibility on what I'm going to do, right? And maybe it's not contradictory because I told myself, you know, even if I don't get on the paid dues festival, like, you know, I campaigned for about 97 days in a row and, uh, you know, kind of followed in the footsteps of, uh, you know, my buddy uh, Noah James, who did it the year before. And so seeing that campaign, I knew I had to add something different to it. And when I did it, I said to myself, look, whether I make it or not, I've already won. Because if I've at least brought the conversation into people's minds that, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I am a, a, a formidable and, a, and a, you know, a, a, an important name, especially on the West Coast when it comes to independent rap and hip-hop, um, then I've already accomplished my goal. And I think what I did was I shed, a, I shed so much light on the grind that I already had done that I made a lot of new fans just through the campaign, and that really wasn't, you know, the, the, the number one goal. The number one goal was to get on there. But you'd be surprised. It's just people are moving. People will move with you when you're already in movement. 
right? People want to help people that are already helping themselves. And a lot of folks are sitting up here stagnant, you know, pointing fingers at why this person not supporting me, why this person not moving with me. And it's like, well, you don't have a movement if you're standing still. So with that campaign, I, I really did kind of put that philosophy to the test. And when I did it, man, it, it got on MERS's radar. And, and you know, it, and now that's <laughs> – it went from me trying to get on his radar via Twitter to – that's that's my bro, man. That's my that's my my, my uh, big brother figure, a mentor, and just somebody that I can I can talk to all the time. It's just crazy how it happens like that. But it starts with you. It starts with with you getting some action going and and just being an undeniable force. Like the 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 roof, the ceiling opens up for the people that stubbornly keep pushing against it. So you got to keep pushing against it. Mm, dropping dropping gems on them, bro. Um, a lot of artists think that, you know, the show is just the 15 minutes. Someone once told me, um, the show is, the show isn't 15 minutes. It's from when you walk in until you walk out. And I took it even a little further. It's from the moment you get booked to the time the show is over. And, uh, leading up to the event, I seen, um, you would do things like dropping the, the pay dues music video and continuing your campaign even once after already, you know, getting your spot on the show. And uh, right. I wanted to see if you if you could speak on um like what are the some of the younger artists that are maybe on the show should be doing leading up to the event whether it be you know trying to get in front of the fans that are attending the festival that may not be familiar with them or what they should be doing with their brand. Well, I think it starts with the artist first. I think the artist needs to determine how do they feel about this event, and the obvious answer for a lot of these young artists is going to be uh, ecstatic, you know, excited. It may be their first festival and. Uh, to see a lot of those names that are on the, the flyer and the legendary names, um, I think it, 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 it's something to where if they continue to showcase their enthusiasm, because there's a difference between enthusiasm and excitement. I think a lot of people get excited when they see the name on the flyer, and then as time goes on, they lose that excitement. But enthusiasm is an energy that doesn't leave. Like, you can have a bad day in the studio and still be enthusiastic about being an artist and then just say, i got to get them the next day. So I think with the artist, as you're leading up to the day, just share your enthusiasm. Like, you don't have to, like, you know, you don't want to spam people with the flyer. You want to make sure that they understand what this means to you, you know, and your your IG captions or your your Twitter, uh, 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 you know, tweets and, and on your YouTube, whatever you're using, you want to make sure that people understand, like, look, I, it's so much energy within me, I cannot hold it in, and uh, it would be an amazing – either way, it's going to be amazing, but if you showed up, it would be even more amazing. And so I think if they can continue to do that, you know, at that point when I made that paid dues video, luckily MERS let me know a few days ahead of time before the announcement because – I told the homie, I was like, homie Art, I was like, yo, man, let's go shoot a video in the park. <laughs> and I want to make that, like, the song that I had, I, I wrote a song. I did all kind of stuff um, in that 48 to 72 hours that I knew it. But I was like, yo, if we release it at the same exact time, um, not only will we have high visibility because people are searching up paid dues and we have a song called Dues Paid, but also because it's like a victory lap, man. Shout out, you know, rest in peace to, to Nipsey Hussle, but shout out to his his his, his philosophy in, in, in the victory lap. And this is the victory lap. That was the victory lap at that point for me to where it was like, look, I campaigned for this, and now I'm on here. And now you literally, like everybody was telling me I was spamming and all you stupid for doing that, you're not going to make it. I'm here. So I already won regardless of how the show goes. But on top of that, I'm here to let you know, like, there's, there is something something called 110 percent, right? And I feel like that 10 percent can't be given beforehand. That 10 percent is a mindset beforehand, but it, 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 in action is what you do after you achieve what you want to achieve. That's where the 10 percent comes to me. Mm, yeah, that, that's that's a gem right there. I would also add to that and say um, for artists that maybe self manage or even if you have a team, um, try reaching out to the festival staff and asking for a press list and getting familiar with what press outlets are going to be present at the festival and trying to arrange interviews or making your, making them aware of yourself and that you'll be at the show and making yourself accessible. Um, another thing that, that works for us would be gathering the troops and figuring out which one of your fans are going to be at the show and trying to get them um, maybe to all wear an artist's merch or something just so even at the show before and after you perform, 
you're going to be walking around and 20 people are wearing the same shirt. Somebody's going to be like, yo, who is that? And um, that was something that really worked for us when performing at Pay Dues. Um, we had maybe like 100 people in the crowd wearing first their stuff and like people were hitting us all, all day like, yo, I've been seeing this merch around. Who are you guys? And then just based off seeing people walking around the show, they would go to the merch booth and buy the stuff. And um, that that's just pieces of advice I would also give the artists. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. I mean, that, you know, that's the thing about it, though. I mean, you you work for that. You work for that. And I know a lot of people don't have access to that right now, but um, you know, you, you got to use what you have. And, and a lot of folks, social media is the primary place that they draw most of their traffic and most of their awareness in terms of when they have shows. So, um, you know, even if you don't have merchandise right now, I, you know, just to add on to what he just said, I think it will be important for you to get. Some, some foot soldiers to go out there and just start collecting emails and social media handles after you perform because that, once again it's the ten percent after the fact when you do a show a lot of folks gonna forget about you there's a lot of folks in that bill what's gonna separate you you know how do you how do you you know I would even get artists to basically send out uh, a free download or, or some kind of free access to the songs that you performed that day right because you never know what that can mean for your stream numbers. You never know what that can mean for somebody who, you know, might have caught only one song, but they really love that song and wish they could have heard your other music. All that stuff plays a part. So, you know, for the artists out there that feel like, oh, you know, I don't know what to do, you know, there's always something to do. Yes, adding to that, I would just say load load the clip up, stack up as much um, material and stuff you can, which would lead into what I want to talk about next, which is the Mm -hmm. day of the show. And uh, I remember having a conversation with uh, yourself and Noah James a little prior to the 2003, 2013 pay dues, and uh, I was asking you guys for advice, and I'll never forget something you told me, and it was just like, yo, don't try to meet your favorite rapper. Try and get in front of as many cameras as you can. And uh, mm-hmm. that that always that always stuck with me. And, um, yeah, I just want, I wanted you to tap in on to the day of the show, what, what all this should be doing. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's you know, and, and and it's crazy how much time has passed since I gave you that advice. It hasn't changed. My a lot of artists, man. Um, you know, I mean, I hate to use the term, but a lot of artists turn into groupies, and and, yeah. and they'll end up having a a, a a forty minute conversation at a festival with Khalifa, and it's like that's cool, but what about visibility? What about when you're trying to, you know, dice up your experience into micro content? What about when you're trying to make a relationship with a, a um, you know, at that time, a blog website that gives you the opportunity to, you know, get blogged for the rest of the year and get all that extra traffic going towards your music? Um, to me, that's more valuable to not even just, net, you know, because we network with artists, but if you do your job, you're going to be in front of artists on a regular basis. Like, you're going to see people over and over and over again if you're doing your job. Um, but a lot of folks treat these artists like once-in-a-lifetime opportunities, and, and they feel it. They can feel that energy. They can feel that energy a mile away, and uh, it feels it feels very leechish, you know. Um, and that's a hard reality for some artists to look at. But I just say like this, you know, if, if it's natural and it makes sense, Go ahead and network and do your thing with these artists. But what's most important is that you have a job to do, right? You, you know, imagine if, imagine if you know Giannis never guarded LeBron because the whole game he wanted his interview or he wanted his tips on how to do a better jump shot. And it's like you got to play ball. Or you about to get balled up. You know, you're gonna lose your contract trying to chase everybody else. So I think it's the same thing with artists is that. Focus on trying to be in front of as many cameras as possible. Focus on the things that everybody else is not doing or everybody else is too shy to do or everybody's too high to do, um, and you'll separate yourself, aggressively separate yourself from the herd. It's too important. Yeah, and uh, I really want to highlight what you have uh, been saying previous to that about uh, the download cards and stuff like that. That is an amazing idea, and like jumping in the crowd and even having business cards or whatever it may be. And really, like you're saying, while people are out partying or at the bar doing whatever, you know, really, really play the crowd and work the crowd and make sure you shake as many hands and all that as possible. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I'm with you on that. And, and I, I wish more people took, took it that serious. But the, the truth of the matter is there are folks who are listening to this right now who know this to be true. They know this is going to be something that would move the needle on their career. 
Um, but they're not going to do it just simply because they're looking for a home run when, you know, you got to you gotta hit a single to get on base first, right? You know, if, if, if your team is down down by three and you need a grand slam, but them other – uh, you know, the other three players got to get up on the on the uh, on the bases, and if you always worried about hitting a home run, like that's cool, but you got to get some some runners on the base. And I think it's the same thing with artists. Like, look at these ideas, and I'm not saying you got to do every single one of them, and not saying that you got to do it perfect. You just got to try it, and uh, as you try it, what you're gonna find is that people, man, people are not as complex as what these strategies feel like. They want to be, they want to feel special. They want to feel like you're actually taking your career serious. Because if you don't take your own career serious, why should they take yours serious? Mm. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, a lot, yeah. Of, a lot of things don't they don't they don't give you the respect that you feel like you deserve. Not you, but the folks listening. You know, some people feel like, man, my fans, my people don't give me the respect I deserve. I'm, I'm slept on. But it's like, bro, you're sleeping on your marketing. You're sleeping on on your consistency. You're sleeping on actually creating music rather than complaining. And because of that, people going to sleep on you. <laughs> so how, how, how you treat your career is how people will treat your career. Yeah. And, um, I mean, at the end of the day, one of the reasons I wanted to build this platform was because there's not many platforms out here where people um, can gain experience for the, the real industry. And uh, a lot of these younger artists, we're putting them on to, this is some of their biggest shows, and they're, they're seeing what a contract is for the first time and what a radius clause is for the first time and um, promotional agreements and just everything that they weren't familiar with kind of playing the local scene, whereas we really want people to uh, step it up and, and help give them resources and, and the experience that's going to help take them to that next level. And, uh, yeah, that, that's exactly what I wanted to do with this interview series too, getting to pick the brains of a gentleman like yourself. All right. Well, I appreciate you including me in on it, you know. Um, the only thing I can add to everything that's being said is just, you know, ha- having having patience, having having the ability to grow your humility over time because it's not something that you just, you're just given. It's something that you have to actively, you know, learn what it, what it is. You know, being grateful, um, having gratitude, and, and then also to just – Understanding being humble does not make you weak, right? It, it, it makes you so powerful that that trying to play power games with people or trying to one up, you know, your homie that got these amount of SoundCloud plays, it doesn't matter because if he wins, you win, right? And not because you get to gain on his experience, but because everybody that came into our life is a contributor to where we're at right now, good and bad. So. In the grand scheme of things, I think a lot of folks, man, if if they knew, if they knew much, if they knew how much of a bag, you know what I mean? When we talk about getting the bag, if they knew how much of a bag they were, they wouldn't, they wouldn't, they wouldn't maneuver the same way that they maneuver. But a lot of folks want you to believe that they're worth a whole lot, but they don't even believe it themselves. But um, when I started realizing that I'm a bag, as much of a bag as I am, I said, no, no, no. I got to move differently. I got to occupy my time with different things. I have to make sure that I take care of my body and my mind and uh, remain grateful above all. Mm. So um, we got we spoke about the leading up to the show and the other the show. Now I want to speak on the follow-up and what you should be doing after the show and, um, and all that and how, speaking from experience, how you were able to use some of the momentum you built off some of these bigger shows that you played into the grand scheme of everything you have going on. Well, I mean, I, I think this is where you start to – the game after the festival is what you're building right now. You should be building it right now, right? If you're an artist that's going to be on here, and this is, a, this is a supremely big deal for you to be on here, you should be honestly creating, you know, a song that's like a celebratory song uh, afterwards, right, and, and envisioning things going perfect or, you know, you should have a project. Maybe you, maybe you got an album that, that's just sitting around there. This is your opportunity to start releasing that, releasing that stuff right after when people are the most hot on your name after a show, right? Because what happens is you can even have somebody on your social media while you're performing and and have them basically start dropping links to songs, right? Like say, hey, thank you everybody who supported me today. Uh, here's a here's a Spotify playlist of all the songs I performed today, um, you know, with the hashtag. 
T-H-O-P. Like, these are the things that you do when you take your career, your career serious, right? And you really have a plan in terms of maneuvering in this digital age. And so for those who are looking for plans afterwards, that's part of the plan is getting the music there, having stuff, you know, also, too, at the event. You know, I, you know, I don't know uh, all the details in terms of what you're allowed to do uh, in terms of uh, video footage, but, man, if you got a videographer, you can get in there and start to, you know, get all – I mean, everything is content, right? You may have a situation where 15 minutes before you go on, you're sitting there talking about how nervous you are. Well, you know there's other artists that look up to you that are going to look at that and say, damn, like, you were nervous and you still killed it. Like, that makes me have inspiration and motivation and want to go kill it even though I feel nervous. Um, because courage is not courage is not the absence of fear. It's, it's feeling the fear and doing it anyways. So I think for, for artists to get out there and, and – Get your content, man. Get get as much video as you can, and then just slice that up for the next few weeks, and uh, let people get the experience who weren't able to make it out there. Mm, yeah, that's that's a gem. I would always say that, that especially these days, you need a media person on the team. And uh, my my recommendation to add on to that was just you should have somebody recording you all day. That's that's yeah. their job, oh. just to record everything you do from the interaction with the fans at the performance to the interactions backstage to the press interviews, like you're saying, this is all useful content. Yeah. Well, I mean, I made a, I made a documentary thanks to the uh, pay deuce festival. Like the only documentary that I have of my name, uh, it's called Kings and Queens was made specifically off of, uh, the fact that I had this show. And I think 30 days before leading up to the show, I had a videographer that was like, I want to capture this. And he captured it. I mean, Pascual, he captured it, and now I forever have that event to live through that video, that ten minute video. So, uh, and it, it doesn't have to be the greatest quality in the world. Just capture it because what you got to think about is the perspective of twenty years from now, right? It, you'll probably even value it even more if the production value was like not that good because you'll look at it and say, "Dang, look how look how early in the game we were, how amateurish we were, but we were still out there getting it." Like, I, I love that. I love seeing stuff like that. Like, imagine if you were able to see, you know, one of Eminem's first studio sessions. I know a lot of Eminem fans would be interested in seeing that, right? Seeing seeing Jay-Z, you know, on the block writing lyrics inside of his head for the first time, uh, uh, you know, just coming up with these verses and then, like, piling them all out when he gets back to the crib. Like, seeing that kind of stuff. It doesn't matter the quality of it. It matters that the experience is more important. So I, I would argue the same thing for artists. You may not feel like you're that big of a deal today, but, you know, what happens when you do become that big of a deal and you didn't capture anything in the beginning? You'll regret that. Mm. I wanted to ask, I know you played, you've been playing shows for a long time now, and um, what, was, what was the best show that you ever played, and what, what was it that made that show special? Ah, uh, the best show that I ever played? Hmm. I want to say, hmm, who was the best show? One of the best shows was definitely in Salt Lake City uh, on the MERS Festival. And, and the crazy part about it, it was this, it was a very small venue. I think it was, um, oh, my God, what was it called? I forgot the name of the venue. But basically, it looked like <laughs> it looked like a garage when you pull up to it. Um, but it's like a little, it's like, it's like a smaller venue that looks like, it has like a little, uh, a little merchandise area and whatnot, but it was in Salt Lake City. I'll never forget it. Um, really small venue, but the, the crowd, oh, my gosh, they were so into it. And they didn't even know who he was. It was Noah performing, I performed, and they didn't have to know who he was. They were just so jacked up for hip-hop. Um, that definitely was a legendary show, but just don't think back. Uh, another great show is probably the MERS show that I, I opened up for um, with the homie Old Gosh. Uh, we had we had we had bass, we had uh, the live drums, and yeah, I, I mean, I, I I tend not to heart, I tend not to think about them type of thing only because like you know you live in the moment and you create more moments. But uh, that def, those are definitely two standouts that come to mind right now. Uh, on the flip side, um, I know a lot of artists are scared of whatever may happen, whether a fight breaks out or the mics go out or the lights go out, whatever it may be. Um, what about the worst show or the worst situation that you've had a, that you found yourself <laughs> in live? My first show, my very very, very first show. show, my very first show. Oh my god, it was 
it was at the key club, right? And, and you would think that that's an amazing thing, especially, you know, because the key club is like legendary L.A. venue. Um, but went to the show, and, you know, they, they uh, the, the promoters made all these promises. We had to sell a bunch of tickets to get there. Um, get inside the venue, man. I mean, it's like, it's so amazing. We on the upper level. It's so amazing. Like, you walk to the front door, and, and I see, like, a band on stage, and it's like, you know, the, the, the lights and the smoke and all are going off, and the band is just having a big old audience in there. And then um, I'm looking, and I ask the person at the front, I said, hey, I'm, I'm here for this hip-hop event. And they said, oh, uh, downstairs. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, for sure, like, you know, no big deal. Man, you know, it's this key club still. Like, so even downstairs should be pretty fire. And I've been to a lot of venues. Like, there's a video, venue in Atlanta called the Marquee that has uh, fire upstairs and downstairs. So I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. Get downstairs, and uh, I kid you not, the stage is about the size of a mattress. Uh, it was in between the kitchen where people were taking dishes from upstairs, downstairs. So we were basically in the basement of this venue. And it was a bunch of chairs. It was a bar down there. But it was so freaking tiny. And I'll never forget, I, I, I performed that show, and I, I still had to, you know, I kept my spirits up. I had my boy on keys, and, and I was rapping, and I got booed out the building almost oh, because man. it was a competition. It was a competition where, you know, we both, we all had to sell tickets, and the winner basically was going to be able to have dinner with these Def Jam and, and, and uh, you know, uh, what was it, Rockefeller executives and all of this stuff, right? And so we're doing the show. There's about 40 artists on the bill, a little small venue. Uh, and, and, and in the back are the A&Rs. They can't even see the stage. They're just sitting back there eating lobster, right? And so I finally get on there. I get booed off stage and because the next band had a bigger audience. And they were like, boo, put the Goonies on. No, let, me, let me the Goonies. Put the Goonies on. And they waited to my slowest song, and they were so loud that I couldn't even hear the beat that I was rapping over. And, uh, yeah, that was my first show off the gate. My cousin at the time, he was underage, and he had a banner on his wrist, but they kicked him out. Uh, you know, my, my, my girlfriend at the time kind of was putting her head down. It was just a bad, <laughs> bad night. And, you know, anytime you go to L.A., you got to pay extra for parking and all that. But that's my first show off the gate, so... You know, the beautiful thing about when you you fall that hard, or you fall that far, is that you ain't got nowhere to look but up. So I'm thankful. I'm thankful I started off with that out the gate because it's like at that point it was like, well, it can't never get as bad as that. And it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully, hopefully artists hear this and, you know, they realize that and don't get discouraged if they have a bad show or forget the rhymes or whatever and they keep it pushing because – I don't know if you guys know this, but he answers that question a lot faster than <laughs> so which was the best show that he ever did. And you, know, you don't forget. You don't forget those, oh, those no. bad shows. Because <laughs> you don't stick with you forever. When, when you're thankful, when you're great, and that's why I keep coming back to this whole idea of being grateful, is that when you're grateful for what you do, any day to perform is is a blessing. When If, it, if there's four people there, if it's 4,000, if it's 14,000, right? It, it, it really, every day that you get to perform is a blessing. But I think... The, the factors that make that more memorable is the fact of how bad it went, but then also, too, that was the first one out the gate. You never forget your first, your first anything, really. So, yeah, that, that definitely was something I could I could answer off the top of my head. That's easy. <laughs> uh, uh, on that note, I know we don't got uh, a lot of your time, man, so let us know what you got going. I know your book is available. Um, I know people can sign up online for the courses and classes and all that stuff. Maybe you can speak more about right. that and let people know how they can sign up. So, yeah, so I have a private community called CurtisKingTV.com. It was basically uh, spawned from all the work that I did on YouTube, you know, because as, I, as I've been an artist and a producer all these years, I've also made sure that I continue to help my, my peers. I help, you know, just anybody that was in this industry that could benefit from the kind of advice that I had, and I took it to YouTube, and then I grew that YouTube from like 900 subscribers, so I think now we're at 160,000, and literally off of videos that are not like, they're not your typical videos that you would see on a YouTube or even with, with producers, but I did it the long way, I did it the hard way, and, and here we are, and so, you know, YouTube started making changes, and, and you know, I, I, I was inspired to really go take my ownership of my content, and then also, too, create an experience that wasn't 
limited by things like content ID where you can't play. Like, if I want to make an inspirational video and put some Dilla music in the background, that's what I want to do. And that's what I did on this, on this private, uh, uh, you know, private community. And so what I do is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we have workshops. We have a, uh, today we have a mental health Monday workshop. Um, Tuesdays we have, uh, music marketing, uh, workshops. We have, uh, Wednesdays are songwriting workshops. Thursdays are beat critique, uh, workshops. And then Fridays I do one-on-one -on -one consultations. And so I have that. I have all my courses, my music producer website course, uh, my FL Studio Beginners course is all inside this same community. Um, and all this stuff is for nineteen ninety five a month. And so, you know, it, it's just been a, a, a beautiful blessing to serve my community and serve the, the, the future of, of this music business and independence. And so that's what I'll continue to do. But uh, that's at CurtisKingTV.com. Anybody who was interested in my book to hit the prosperous hip hop producer, uh, just go to MusicProducerBook.com, and you'll find that it's on Amazon, it's on Audible, it's on uh, you know Apple Books, all that good stuff. But uh, yeah, I mean that's anything else you need to find CurtisKingBeats.com for production. But I spend most of my time at Curtis King TV on the YouTube bar CurtisKingTV.com. So come check us out. Thank you for everything. Thank you for your time, man. Thank you for everything you've been doing. Um, you've been a big inspiration for me since for a long time now. And again, we're real grateful to have you on the show this year. And, uh, you know, thank you for dropping all these gems on us. Make sure to follow yeah. Curtis at Curtis King on, on all platforms and come catch him live October 5th at the Happiness of Pursuit Festival with Oga Ashley Otis and a live band.